Hey folks, I hope this message finds you well. You know, today we live in very confusing times. It seems that now more than ever, we are facing a constant and rather violent push and pull between the traditional values which formed the societies in which we live and a more progressive totalitarian agenda. It is increasingly difficult to define acceptable social behavior because it seems that the goalposts for what is acceptable shift from week to week. And although that might sound like a bit of an exaggeration, I don't believe it's far from the truth. The focus of this little rant is how often I notice the problems of our world being laid directly at the foot of capitalism and the suggestion by radical activists that if we only overthrew this oppressive system, then everything would somehow become more just, more equitable, and more peaceful. I have a few problems with that suggestion, and I'm going to lay them out for you. I should start off by saying that I have read the Communist Manifesto, the seminal doctrine from which both communism and socialism arise, because I believe that before one can have an opinion on a philosophical or political stance, one must first try to understand it fully. Having read the work of Marx, I can see how communism would be an appealing philosophy and social construction to those who feel dispossessed or mistreated. On an emotional level, it's very easy to see why the idea of a powerful and well-meaning government on your side against those who they deem unfairly privileged would make people feel good. But the sad thing is, that's not how things play out in reality. In this regard, I'm not just speaking hypothetically. I have the benefit, if you can call it that, of being South African. And although South Africa is a democracy in name, our government is very much aligned to communist ideals. Since coming to power in 1994, our ruling party, the African National Congress, has made a big show of talking about things like equity, racial justice, and freedom. And while all those things sound nice on the surface, what is played out in practice is a very different matter. For decades now, one of the policies under which we have lived is known as broad-based black economic empowerment. And theoretically, this policy was instituted to address the inequality caused by the racial segregation of apartheid. Now, in principle, I am a firm believer in giving everyone a fair shot, regardless of their race or gender. But in practice, what this has led to is a quota system where people's racial identity is prioritized well above their skill level or qualifications. As a consequence, almost all of South Africa's state-run enterprises are bloated by high numbers of staff who simply do not know how to perform the functions for which they have been employed, and therefore the enterprises themselves are bankrupt and in constant need of state bailouts on the taxpayer's dime. The cause of these failures is a misunderstanding which can be traced all the way back to Marx himself. You cannot make people equal. Fundamentally, we are different, and people as individuals 
have different skills and are suited to different tasks. This does not mean that one human is of less social value than another, but the reality is that no matter how hard you try to force a square peg into a round hole, it's simply never going to fit. Sadly, daring to point out this basic truth will get you labeled racist if you happen to be white or a servant of the wealthy if you are not. Regardless of how many examples of failure exist or the levels of needless suffering that are evident in the day-to-day goings-on of South African life. One of the great ironies of the South African social hierarchy is that our leaders will denounce the evils of capitalism in one breath while living like the worst stereotypes of capitalist robber barons that you might imagine in another. They spend their days being chauffeured around in luxury European cars, traveling under police escort from lavishly catered event to event, while ordinary South Africans struggle just to make ends meet at the end of each month. Perhaps the most bitterly amusing thing of all is that many of the low-level activists who demand the total abolishment of capitalism are students who have never worked a real job in their lives and do so on social media platforms and smartphones, things which would never have come into existence under communist rule because state-mandated equality does not foster creativity or entrepreneurial innovation. So, to those who seem so eager to hand their freedom and individual liberty over to the control of the state, I would suggest you take a good long look at the real circumstances here in South Africa and think about what you might be signing yourself up for. For now, farewell.